What lies hidden deep beneath Hawaii's volcanic forests? How can a river of molten rock flowing thousands of feet below the surface carve out a tunnel tens of miles long? The answer emerges from a remarkable feature on the Big Island, the Kazumura Lava Tube. This vast underground conduit stretches more than 40 miles, or roughly 65 kilometers, from the flanks of Kilauea Volcano nearly to the Pacific Ocean, making it the longest known lava tube on Earth. It also plunges to record depths, eaching about 1,100 meters, or around 3,600 feet, below its highest entrance. Kazumura is not merely a cave. It is a geological manuscript that records the behavior of one of the world's most active volcanoes. The story of its formation begins roughly six centuries ago. Around the year 1410, an eruption at the summit of Kilauea began to discharge fountains of molten basaltic lava. The eruption, known today as the Eilaau eruption, would become one of the most voluminous events in the volcano's history. Initially, bursts of glowing magma shot skyward from the Kilauea Iki crater before settling into long, quiet phases of effusive flow. As the eruption stabilized, the lava began advancing downslope toward the east at a pace slower than a walking person, less than one mile, or about one and a half kilometers per hour. Though slow, it was relentless. As the lava advanced, the outer crust cooled and thickened while the core stayed incandescent. A crust only a few centimeters thick could insulate lava exceeding 1100 degrees Celsius, or around 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. This delicate balance between cooling and insulation is what gave rise to the first lava tubes. Molten basalt beneath the rigid skin continued to move freely, carving through the soft interior of the flow and creating a hollow cavity beneath the surface. Gravity, slope, and pressure all worked in concert to keep the molten material moving eastward. Each pulse of lava left behind subtle marks, ripple textures, frozen drips, and glazed walls that would later testify to the cave's formative flow regime. The lava tube that became Kazumura didn't form in one swift moment. It evolved gradually as the eruption persisted over six decades. During those sixty years, the system repeatedly inflated and drained, constructing stacked passages and multiple flow levels. Each new pulse of lava entered the tube at slightly different temperatures and viscosities, creating a dynamic layering within the conduit. Where the flow thickened, the molten interior pressed against the roof and sidewalls, melting portions of the older rock through a process called thermal erosion. That erosion widened the tunnel, while deposition of new lava coatings on the floor and lower walls simultaneously reshaped the internal architecture. As the main conduit stabilized, lava flowed through it at speeds ranging between 5 and 15 miles per hour, about 8 to 24 kilometers per hour, propelled purely by gravity and hydraulic pressure from the source vent. This internal speed contrasts sharply with the sluggish advance of the lava front on the surface, which crept along at less than one mile per hour. Inside the tube, flow was more efficient, confined, and insulated. It's estimated that the lava traveling through Kazumura could move nearly 20 miles, or about 32 kilometers, without losing more than 4 degrees Celsius of temperature. Such energy conservation explains how lava from the Kilauea Iki vent managed to reach the distant coastal plains before solidifying. As the years went by, the continuing eruption began to exhaust Kilauea's shallow magma reservoir. Lava withdrawal gradually emptied portions of the chamber beneath the summit, setting the stage for collapse. By the year 1470, when the eruption ceased, 
Nearly six cubic kilometers of magma had erupted, equivalent to about one and a half trillion gallons of molten rock. The withdrawal of this vast mass left behind a void that caused the overlying rock to buckle and sink, forming the early structure of Kilauea's modern caldera. The resulting subsidence abruptly cut off the lava supply feeding Kazumura. Without pressure from above, the molten stream within the tube drained away, leaving behind a massive hollow that extended from near the summit all the way toward the ocean. The process of draining transformed the inner structure of the cave. As the molten core receded, the roof of the tube solidified from the top downward, allowing pockets of trapped gas to expand and burst. These created blisters and hornitos, now preserved as bulbous protrusions and vents along the ceiling. Gas escape also produced fragile formations called lava sickles, the volcanic equivalent of stalactites, formed as droplets of still molten rock dripped from the ceiling and froze mid-descent. In some sections of Kazumura, entire chambers aligned with these needle-like crystals, each marking a moment in the final breath of the eruption. After the lava drained away, gravity began to claim its toll. Over the following four centuries, the roof of the now empty tube experienced periodic collapses. Each time the ground above sagged, a section of ceiling fell in, opening skylights that pierced the forest floor. More than 100 such skylights have been documented across the Kazumura system. Some are mere pinholes, while others form gaping pits tens of feet wide and nearly 30 meters deep. These skylights not only allowed explorers to enter the cave centuries later, but also helped oxygen circulate and support sparse ecosystems inside. The internal geometry of Kazumura is remarkably complex. In some regions, the passage resembles a subway tunnel, wide and straight. In others, it narrows into twisting corridors barely wide enough for a person to squeeze through. Vertical pits punctuate the system, connecting upper and lower levels like natural elevator shafts. Some are believed to be former lava cascades, where the molten flow plunged vertically, carving wells and smooth chutes. On the cave floor, lava ripples, benches, and rope-like patterns reveal varying flow speeds. When lava flow slowed or momentarily pooled, it inflated the surface into rounded lobes. When the current intensified, it scoured the floor, leaving behind polished troughs or scald marks etched in the basalt. Geologists studying the cave's interior have noted how thermal erosion left distinct markings on the side walls. In some areas, the tube wall is undercut. Evidence that the lava stream's turbulent inner flow removed material from the lower edges faster than it could deposit new coatings. This erosion likely occurred when velocity exceeded critical shear thresholds, allowing molten rock to mechanically abrade the wall and even remelt it. Microscopic analysis of wall samples reveals alternating layers of dense, glassy basalt and vesicular zones, bubbles that froze in place as gas escaped during cooling. The result is a cross-section resembling tree rings, each band recording fluctuations in flow rate and temperature during the eruption. The temperature differential between the active lava and the ambient rock also created zones of partial remelting. Where the flowing lava's temperature hovered near 1100 degrees Celsius, it could remelt previously solidified crusts within minutes. This effect generated smooth, glassy surfaces seen today on the cave's ceilings and walls, almost like the glaze of obsidian. In other places, localized cooling caused crustal slumping, the cave roof sagging under its own weight before it fully hardened. 
This mechanical deformation produced the undulating ceilings that characterize large portions of Kazumura's mid-level segments. Equally fascinating are the internal acoustic features, the resonance patterns that shaped its final form. When molten lava flowed through constricted sections, expanding gases trapped within would oscillate, producing rhythmic vibrations. These oscillations carved wave-like ridges on the walls, known as lava harmonics. The physical record of sound and flow interacting is rare in geological contexts, but in Kazumura even these fleeting tremors have left visible traces. Every curve and fold is an echo of molten music, frozen into basalt. After centuries of quiescence, Kazumura remains surprisingly intact. The air inside stays relatively constant, around 22 degrees Celsius near its lower reaches and 15 degrees Celsius near the higher entrances. The humidity approaches saturation, preserving the delicate mineral coatings that form on the walls. Thin white crusts of gypsum, a product of volcanic gases reacting with moisture, grow in patches like frost. Over time, slow seepage of rainwater through the porous basalt introduced secondary mineralization. Iron oxides, manganese stains, and even delicate silica draperies that shimmer under light. Each of these post-eruptive processes continues to subtly modify the cave, creating a second layer of geological artistry atop the first. The youthful age of Kazumura makes it an unparalleled laboratory for volcanologists. Because it formed only about 580 years ago, its surfaces remain largely unweathered. Unlike ancient tubes eroded by time, Kazumura preserves pristine examples of lava morphology, from inflation features to channelized flow marks. Scientists can study it to better understand how modern lava tubes on active volcanoes evolve. It also serves as a model for understanding similar subsurface conduits on other planets. Planetary geologists have compared Kazumura's structure to possible lava tubes detected on Mars and the Moon, suggesting that extraterrestrial analogues might provide shelter for future explorers or clues about volcanic histories beyond Earth. Even within Hawaii, Kazumura's existence reshaped how scientists think about lava transport. Before its discovery, the extent of subsurface flow networks was underestimated. It demonstrated that under the right thermal and rheological conditions, lava tubes could extend for more than 60 kilometers, maintaining continuous flow and minimal cooling loss. This realization helped explain how large basaltic plains can form rapidly, not by countless surface flows stacking layer upon layer but by a smaller number of extensive underground channels delivering lava efficiently over great distances. Despite extensive mapping, Kazumura is still not fully explored. The deepest and farthest branches remain sealed or blocked by collapse. Some sections may continue beyond the map limits toward the ocean, buried under later flows. The current known length of 40.7 miles could therefore be an underestimate. If extensions exist, they may connect with younger lava tubes from later eruptions, creating an even more elaborate subsurface labyrinth beneath the Big Island. Such possibilities fuel ongoing exploration and research, combining rope work, remote sensing, and thermal scanning to peer beyond the known limits of darkness. What makes Kazumura remarkable is that it is both ancient and alive. Though the eruption that birthed it ended long ago, the processes that built it continue to operate elsewhere on Kilauea today. Each new eruption begins with surface channels that may one day evolve into tubes like Kazumura's ancestors. Each flow, each crust, each inflation mound repeats a pattern written in molten language six centuries ago. To walk through Kazumura's passages is to witness a time capsule of volcanic activity. 
a frozen river whose currents once roared with unimaginable energy. And so, when one stands inside its silent chambers, beneath ceilings of rippled stone and walls glazed black as obsidian, it's hard not to wonder how many other conduits like this lie undiscovered beneath our feet. Could other networks, even larger or deeper, still snake through the basaltic bedrock of Hawaii's volcanoes, hidden from view? What secrets of eruption dynamics and planetary formation might they hold? The deeper one goes, the stronger these questions become. Kazumura is not only a natural marvel, it's a reminder that the Earth is constantly building and reshaping itself, often in places we can barely reach. For now, the longest, deepest and youngest lava tube ever found remains both a triumph of geology and a mystery of creation. It is a monument to the power of molten rock to sculpt, carve and tunnel through the planet's crust with surgical precision. Deep underground, in darkness unbroken for centuries, Kazumura continues to whisper the story of the fire that forged it, the story of a volcano that burned forests, reshaped landscapes, and hollowed a path through stone. And as long as scientists continue to map its depths, analyze its walls, and study the remnants of its heat, the cave remains alive in a different sense, out through fire, but through human curiosity. So, if you've reached the end of this journey through the world's deepest lava tube, imagine yourself standing at its mouth, where sunlight meets ancient shadow. The story of Kazumura is still unfolding, and who knows what more lies below. If you found this exploration fascinating, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and tap that hype icon to help this story of fire and stone reach a wider audience.